Hello and welcome back to the Milan Save on Football Manager 2023. Since the last episode where we faced Chelsea in two games in the UEFA Champions League group stage and picked up one point out of those two games, we played three league games off camera and it's it's gone all right. It's gone all right. We'll run through those in a second. We've also made a transfer, which obviously isn't going to come through until the beginning of January, but I'll show you the guy that we've bought. And we have the final two group games in the Champions League where we're hoping, hopefully, to get through to the knockout stage by the end of this episode. But we'll kick things off with our first league game, which was against Cremonese, and we absolutely battered them. Alexis Salamak has grabbed himself a hat-trick. He was well and truly on form, just 0.1 off getting a 10 match rating in this one. We did have a, an injury to Olivier Giroud in this one as well, but it didn't really affect us. Divock Origi came in for him, managed to get a goal from the penalty spot as well. We also decided to rest a few players for this one as, as well. Benesa and Tonali and defence midfield were rested, but we, we still managed to pick up the win. We then had the Milan derby against Inter and we won that too. We won 2-0 against our local rivals at home at the San Siro and yeah, a great performance from Salamakas once more. He got himself a goal, a disallowed goal as well, unfortunately. And then Ante Rebic coming off the bench to get our second. But then ahead of our most recent match that we played away from home against Torino, injury struck. We lost our goalkeeper, Mike Manian, to injury. One of our centre-backs, Matteo Gabbia, also got injured before the game. And Fikayu Tamori, whose name I always struggle with, he had a suspension for this game. So... A key part of our spine was actually missing from this game. Jungdahl came in, who's a young goalkeeper, um, living up to his, his name slightly of having Jung in it. The 20-year-old Danish national came in for his first start for us. He did all right. He got a 7.3 match rating, um, but it was a nil-nil draw. Giroud not firing on all cylinders. Salamakas must have been knackered from his previous two excellent efforts that he had. And then again, Liao and Diaz just not performing well. Uh, we were, we rested Sandro Tonali as well for this one because he was a bit tired. And Theo Hernandez also got a rest with Balotori coming in. And then uh, obviously because of the lack of central defenders, Simon Kier came in for this one. We moved Kalulu from right back to centre back and then brought in Serginio Dest at right back. So I think that just the fact that these players hadn't all played together before, it just didn't help. But despite the fact that we dropped points there, we are still in a pretty decent position. We're sitting fourth in Serie A. We are two points off top of the table, but we've got two games in hand. We're level on points with fifth place Fiorentina, who have also got two games in hand. So it looks like at this early stage of the season, it's going to be a battle between us two for the title. But of course, we do have to win those games in hand. Now, before we get into the Champions League and have a look at the Champions League standings and what's going on there, because we are into the Wednesday of this game week of the Champions League. So there has been quite a few teams already qualified from the Tuesday game. So we'll take a look at that in a second. But before that, this is our new sign and Wilfred Singo. He's been signed from our previous opponents, Torino. He is a right back. So, well, he can play at right midfield as well. He can play right down that right hand side, really up from right back up to right midfield, which is sort of useful to have, but we don't really play with a right midfielder. But he's been brought in as a replacement for Davide Calabria. Uh, he's, he looks very decent. He's definitely going to improve in the future as well. He's only 21 years old, which means that it fits in with our club vision of signing players under the age of 22 for the first team. He's going to come in straight into the first team lineup and hopefully do a good job for us. We have spent 20 million on him, but hopefully he's going to, he's going to bring some quality. So as I said, there has been many teams qualifying in the Champions League from yesterday's games in game so Bayern and Napoli have qualified from group E it's still tight between Olympiacos and Sevilla to see who's going to qualify for the Europa League Tottenham and Porto have qualified from group F we still don't know which order they're going to finish in because they are both on 12 points and it's looking very unlikely that in fact it's impossible because they've played five games so Shakhtar are going to be in the Europa League from that group Real Madrid and Leipzig know exactly where they've qualified one and two in the league and then Sporting and Club Bruges can still battle it out for the final well for the Europa League drop down qualifying space and then Liverpool are the only team to have qualified so far from Group H and they've qualified definitely top of their group uh, they've won all five games it's between Inter and Ajax for that final spot but Inter are in the, the the pool position to get that qualification space as they are three points ahead of Ajax I'm assuming they play each other in the last game week indeed they do so whoever wins that is going to I imagine qualify from the group but now let's focus on our group and what we have to do. So we are still currently bottom of our Champions League group, but it's not as bad as it seems. We're only three points off top of the group Chelsea. We've got Bayer Leverkusen first up. We beat them in the reverse fixture. I think we beat them about 4-1. In fact, yeah, it's at the bottom of the screen there. 
we, we beat them 4-1 at home. So hopefully we can have a repeat of that away from home. That'll help us out because we will go above them. So we'll be at least third, depending on what Monaco do against Chelsea. And then we face Monaco in the final group game. So it's all still in our hands. We just need to win. And in fact, there's been a, a, a few early kickoffs already today. So PSG have beaten Red Bull Salzburg 4-0. I imagine that probably sends PSG through. We'll take a look at that in a second. Chelsea have beaten Monaco 4-2 as well. So let's see what that means. So it means Chelsea have qualified from our group and PSG have qualified from their group. But of course, um, Chelsea not qualified in first just yet because we need to play Bayer Leverkusen. So here we are with our lineup for this first Champions League game away from home against Bayer Leverkusen. It's a bit of a rotated one. Mike Maignan still injured. Andreas Jungdahl is in for him in goal. Uh, right back, we've got Serginio Des continuing there in place of Kalulu because Matteo, Matteo Gabbia, who normally plays at centre-back, is still not fully fit. He's along, Pierre Kalulu is alongside Tomori in the centre of defence. Hernandez at left back as always, Benesa Tonali in defensive midfield, Salamakas Diaz in Liao across the attacking midfield line, and then Olivier Giroud is the lone man up front. On the bench, we do have Simon Kier, who's returning back from injury also, and the usual suspects, as well as a handful of youngsters. So there is the Bayer Leverkusen squad and formation. It's pretty similar to ours, in fact. If they're both defensive midfielders, it's identical to ours. Interestingly, Bayer Leverkusen with just the one win in their last six matches in all competitions. They lost the last Champions League game 1-0 to Monaco, so they're not in the best of form. We are, of course, in pretty decent form at the moment if you take out the, the Chelsea defeat. So hopefully we can pick up another win here. Okay, first chance of the game. It's going to be a throw-in for us in a very attacking area. Kalulu finds Benesa. Benesa ball into the box towards Tonali. Tonali just gets there ahead of Andrik. Theo's on the edge of the box. Can he get a shot off? Theo with a shot. And Theo with a beautifully placed finish off the underside of the crossbar. And we're 1-0 up after less than 10 minutes. Hopefully, this means things are going to be positive for us. Is that a just eat advert? Uh, it's making me hungry. So it was Benesa with the ball into the box. I didn't think Tonali had got there, but he just managed to get a toe ahead of Andrik. And then Tio with a shot to set up and then a, a touch to set up, I should say. And then a shot off the underside of the bar. Excellent finish. And that is exactly what we needed. Moves us up to second in the group for the time being, however, as Bayer Leverkusen could be on the attack here with Hlozek. Now Andrik out wide to Musa Diaby. Diaby cuts inside. Diaby with a shot and let's say by Jungdahl. So Serginio Dest has just lost the ball in our own half. Lozek shakes there. He plays it forward to Wirtz. And by Leverkusen have equalised Florian Wirtz. Oh, it all came from Serginio Dest dawdling on the ball in defence. And Leverkusen are back level. In KP forward to Adam Lozek. Back to Palacios. Pal Palacios spreads play out wide left to Lozek. Lozek with a chance to get a ball in, possibly here. Takes a touch to get the ball out of his feet. Schick's there with a header and Schick has turned the game around. Leverkusen are now 2-1 up and things are looking pretty bad for us. So Lozek just not closed down enough. Plenty of time to pick out a ball to Patrick Schick to head it in. And I think this means, if it stays as it is, we can't qualify for the knockout stages. And just before half time, we're in a stoppage time, in fact. Verts with a ball in, Lozek with a header. And it was actually Tomori who managed to, to meet it and head that out. But we really need to, to get out of our own half here. Leverkusen just pinning us back. Diaby running down the right-hand side. Plays the ball into the box to Frimpong. If they score again, it's practically over for us as Patrick Schick has scored. It's 3-1. It's 3-1. We're going to be five points off second place in the group, which means we're not going to be able to qualify for the knockout stage of the Champions League. We're going to be two points off Monaco, who are currently in the Europa League place. So there might not even be any European football for the end of the season. And that is a ridiculous goal. I'm sorry. That is... Ugh. Such a lucky goal. Half time. And from the elation of Hernandez's eighth minute goal, it's completely turned on its head now. We need a miracle, in fact, to, to get anything from this game. I'm going to make some changes. I, I went apeshit on the, the players at half time. I thrashed my arms around and said that it just wasn't good enough. We're going to take Kalulu off because he's on a 6.3. Simon Kier is going to come on for him. We'll switch them around so that Kier's at defensive centre left. And Tomori's on defensive centre right. And we're also going to take Salamakas off because he he's looking anxious out there and he's not playing too great. So Junior Messias is going to come on for him. We, of course, have, I think, three more subs that we can make at some point. But I don't want to change the, the squad too much, the lineup too much for the time being. So hopefully we can go out there and 
try and get some goals. Okay, we're just approaching the 60 minute mark and we're, I think we're yet to have a shot in this half. So we're going to push up our, cent our defensive midfielders to centre midfield. I am tempted to move the wing backs up as well, but we maybe do that in another 10 minutes, see how this gets on. Benesa is looking a bit tired out there in defensive midfield. Serginho so Dest is tired at right back. I don't have another right back to bring on. In fact, I've got rid of the two players that can play at right back who were already in the squad in Salamakas and Kalulu. So Serginho so Dest is unfortunately going to have to continue playing despite the fact he was at fault for that goal. Well, for one of the goals that Bayer Leverkusen scored. Um, Diaz is not doing well on a 6.4. Our goalkeeper is terrible, but I guess we have to bear in mind we do, we are without our first choice goalkeeper today. Um, if that's an excuse that's valid for why we're losing, I don't know. Do I bring Charles de Ketelaire on for Diaz? Um, I mean, I might as well. I might as well at this point. Because de Ketelaire, the substitute forward to Olivier Giroud, who's been very quiet in this game so far. He's got about three men around him. He's doing well to, to keep the ball, just holding up play while he gets support. He's got some support in the form of Tonali, who can get a ball into the box here. Possibly he's into the box. Andrik dispossesses him, but Tonali wins it back. It's headed away by Frimpong. And is this going to be another chance for Leverkusen on the counter? It's Adam Hlozek switching play towards Diaby. Diaby has got it. He's just sprinted past Theo in defence. Diaby cutting inside now. Leverkusen look like they could be about to get their fourth of the game. It's Vert with a shot and it's Vert with the goal. It's an identical scoreline as to what we beat them at home. And, oh, how has this happened? Right, we're, we're going to go a bit wild here because we, we literally have to go all out. Otherwise, I mean, it's very unlikely we're going to even get a draw at this point, but we might as well give it a go. We're going to switch our mentality to attacking. Why have I put Ism as a target forward? I want Ism in advance forward. Advance forward. I can't even talk anymore. What's going on? Leao, right. What do you want to do? Throw in for Leverkusen inside their own half. It's Vert who plays that back to Frimpong. And I mean, we've got 17 minutes left. It's highly unlikely we're going to get a goal. In fact, it's more than likely that they're going to possibly get five or six here. It's Diaby running into the box. Diaby to the back post. Lozak should have maybe headed it himself but passes it along to Palacios and it's 5-1 to Leverkusen yay am I gonna get sacked am I gonna get sacked for this I feel like it's 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 a possibility that I could get sacked for this I mean there's no point in me doing anything right now with 5-1 down there's it's gonna be six probably here there was no chance of us getting back from a 4-1 deficit Frimpong's just taking his time on the corner Well, <laughs> oh, sacked in the morning. I'm getting sacked in the morning. I'm getting sacked in the morning. Oh, I don't want to see the replay. Just end the game, please. Uh, uh, I mean, our club vision was to be competitive in the Champions League. I'm not sure if this, I don't think this lines up with that. It's water bottle throwing time. Um, not go into that. I don't want to go to that interview. Okay, so this is how things stand with one game left in the group stage. We're bottom of the group. We are two points behind Monaco. So we need to beat Monaco to get into the Europa League knockout rounds. Um, fans not happy. Milan Sheske, he's named after the club, is fuming with that. Uh, Anik Kwayum sent to you once answers. Not looking forward to this. Is the board going to want to talk to me? Surprisingly not. Okay. So despite the fact we've technically been knocked out of the Champions League, the board still appear to be quite happy with our performance, which I'm a bit surprised about, but I'll take it. So I'll quickly play the Udinese game off camera, and then we'll come back for the final Champions League game of the season against Monaco. So we played that game against Udinese, and we won 3-1, but that doesn't tell the full story. So we, we rested a few players for this game. Theo Hernandez was rest rested. We still didn't have Mike Manian. Kieran Tomori were our two centre-backs. Serginio Dest wasn't able to play, so Kalulu was at right-back. Uh, we rested our two defensive midfielders. Messias was playing at right-wing instead of Salamakas. Diaz was in at centre attacking midfield. And then Rebic was playing at left-wing instead of Rafa Leao with Origi up front instead of Olivier Giroud. So in the end, we went a goal down on the 59th minute. So I had to bring on... Charles de Ketelaer in attacking centre midfield. We switched Diaz out to the left side of attacking midfield and Giroud came on for Origi. And thankfully, Giroud 
equalized for us. Diaz then put us into the lead and Giroud got a second late on in the game and that did give us the win in the end. And that leaves Serie A looking like this. We've still got two games in hand over the three te two teams above us. Fiorentina have dropped off a bit. They must have lost their game. Uh, so we're two points off top of the table with two games in hand. So it's still looking pretty good in the league. But of course, it is all down to this game against Monaco as to whether we are going to have European football for the second half of the season. We win this, we get into the Europa League knockout stages, which is better than nothing. But if we don't, we obviously don't, and we just focus on domestic competitions. Elsewhere, our half of the Champions League groups is it's a bit more open than the other half. So there's still a lot of qualification places up for grabs. Atletico have qualified from Group A, but Benfica and Marseille can both qualify. Man City, Barcelona and Dortmund are all up for possible qualification. Chelsea and Bayer Leverkusen have obviously qualified from our group. It's just as to whether who's going to finish first and second. And then in Group D, it could be one of three teams in theory. Celtic, Juve or Red Bull Salzburg could be joining PSG in the knockout stage. So we'll have to see what happens. Okay, so a uh, slightly rotated squad for this final Champions League game. Young Dallas still in goal because Mike Manian is still unfortunately injured. Alexis Salamakas is coming in at right back. Pierre Kalulu is not in great condition, so he's been dropped to the bench. Matteo Gabi and Simon Kier are in central defence. For Keo Tomori, also in need of a rest, so he's been dropped to the bench for Gabi. Theo Hernandez comes back in at the squad. He was he was rested for the league game against Udinese. Benesa and Tonali also come back into the squad. We've got Junior Messiah staying at right wing. Charles de Ketelea comes in for Brahim Diaz, who also needs a rest at attacking centre midfield. And Rafa Leao was in for Ante Rebic at left wing, with Olivia Giroud, the man that came off the bench to save us in the league game against Udinese, returning to the first team for this one. So we need a win. That's that's literally it. We need a win. And I was just looking at the lineup that Monaco put out, and interestingly, the man who punished us last time out. Wissam Bin Yedder is not actually playing today, so hopefully that helps us. So I didn't think we deserved to hear the Champions League anthem, obviously, since we're not going to be in the knockout round, hence why we, we didn't. But we have the ball now in our final appearance of the Champions League in this season. It's Salamakas at right back, just holding up, looking up for the pass to Benesa. Now Messias on the right, nice ball through to Di Casalea first time. Through ball from him to Giroud. Giroud's going to get there. It's a mistake from the defender and Olivia Giroud has given us the lead. In the first 10 minutes of the game, once again, we've taken the lead as we did against Udinese in the league. Hopefully we can hold on this time and not concede. Not against Udinese, as we did against uh, Bayer Leverkusen in the Champions League. Literally the last game that you saw. So hopefully, as I said, we can continue, but it's terrible defending from De Sassi. Giroud just pouncing on that bad touch from him and making him pay. Free kick for Monaco. Could they be turning the game around? Maybe not. It could be a counter-attack for us. Giroud has the ball from De Ketelea, and he's he's not the quickest, bless him, the 36-year-old. So he's just held the ball up nicely and played it back towards Vanessa, who's running down this right-hand side now. Is he going to try and get a ball into the box? He plays it across to Messias instead. Messias whips it into the back post. Liao is there, and Liao has doubled our lead. Rafa Liao. But we're going to have a VAR check, it looks like. I'm guessing that the check is for offside. It's been given. It's been given. I, I'm... I think it must have been far offside. Not really sure. Third goal of the season for Rafa Leao. Benesa with a nice run down the right wing. Messias picks him out at the back post. And he taps that home. Benesa with the ball forward to Giroud. Nice touch from Giroud. Through ball from him to De Ketelea. De Ketelea to get another one. And he's placed that just wide of the goal. A good opportunity there for the youngster. But he didn't take it. So we've got a possible injury to Ishmael Benesa. He might have a bruised thigh. So we're, we're not going to... We're 2-0 up. We're not going to risk him making that any worse. We're going to bring on Tommaso Pabega in defensive midfield elsewhere. Everyone's condition looks okay. The match ratings all look fine as well. So we'll just confirm that one change and carry on with the game. So it's Pabega, the substitute. Long ball, searching ball to the right-hand side where Messias is actually going to pick this up. It's Junior Messias with the ball into the box, headed away by Badashiel and headed further away by Voland, but it's going to come to the feet of Alexis Salamakas at right-back. Now Pabega forward to Messias. Through ball from him to Giroud, and Giroud was smashed at home. Was he onside? I think he was. It's not looking like it's going to go to VAR. Olivia Giroud gets our third goal of the day. Why couldn't we have done this against Leverkusen? So it was Pabega with a beautiful pass to Junior Messias. He played a nice through ball to Giroud, who did look onside, to be fair. And he smashed that home. An excellent finish from the experienced French striker. 
In fact, we'll see how tight the offside was here. It wasn't very tight at all. Giroud comfortably onside for me. So we've got 10 minutes to go. We're going to think about who needs to... Who, who could do with a little bit of a rest? There's a lot of players that are looking a bit tired out there, to be quite honest. Um, I'm tempted to just bring on some youngsters. We've got a couple of centre-backs on the bench. I'm going to bring Dorian Paloshi on for Matteo Gabbia in central defence. He's a, a one-star rated current ability central defender. Uh, his, his head and marking, tackling, all fine. Nothing to write home about. Uh, great natural fitness, but yeah, we'll just give him a little, little run out for 10 minutes or so. And we'll do the same for Giovanni Robotti in defensive midfield as well. He can come on for Sandro Tonali. Uh, again, not not a great player. He's all right. We'll we'll see how he does in the next ten minutes. Probably a good idea to rest our old man of uh, striker as well. So we'll bring Divokarigi on for the final ten minutes, and Rafaleo can have a rest as well. So there we go, a three 0 win. The type of performance we really needed in the the first of today's two live com matches, but. It means we're into the Europa League knockout round. So we do have European football at the back end of the season, which is good because I was wondering what games I was going to be bringing you in the, the live comms. So we will be doing the Europa League games in the, the next few episodes. So all group games in the Champions League have now been played. So we can take a look at who has actually done what we couldn't do and qualified for the knockout round. So Benfica and Atletico are the two teams to qualify from a very open Group A on paper. Barcelona and Man City, the lucky two to qualify from Group B. Dortmund missing out in the Europa League. Obviously Chelsea and Bayer Leverkusen from our group. And then PSG and Juve. Juve knocking Celtic out of that qualification spot that they held for the majority of the, the time in this group. And very unfortunate for Celtic, but they are into the Europa League. In the second half of the draw, Bayern and Napoli have qualified from Group E, Porto and Tottenham from Group F. I think we've already knew most of these. The only one we didn't know was Inter, and they have successfully qualified from Group H. So we won't be seeing any of them in the Europa League. Uh, Ajax, Sporting, Shakhtar, Sevilla, Celtic, Dortmund, Marseille, all join us in the Europa League. Uh, let's take a look at what's happened there. So obviously their games are still going on, and I think... I think we play against second place in the groups. So, looking at it, got teams like Slovan, Bratislava, possibly, Lazio. We uh, Would we be able to get them? An all-Italian tie? I think you can do that in the knockout round, can't you? I think so. Uh, well, we're not going to have to wait for long anyway for that. The draw for the knockout playoff round, I think it's called, is in five days' time. So, we'll do that draw, and then we'll end the episode. Okay, so it's nearly Europa League draw time and we've played one game since I last spoke to you about a second ago and that was away from home against Lazio so we went down to 10 men Salamaka's got himself sent off for a horrific challenge on the 19th minute we went we, we were one nil up at the time Jury were giving us the lead on the eighth minute but we got drawn level by Zakani on the 57th minute and then Olivia Giroud we had been com we've not really created much that I saw in terms of highlights. You can see that our XG was pretty good. We had a decent number of shots, but all the highlights seemed to be Lazio chances. But then Giroud popped up with the winning goal. So we won 2-1 against Lazio. That means that with one game left before the World Cup break, we are currently top of the table with a game in hand on pretty much everyone else apart from the team that I'm assuming we're playing in the game in hand, Spezia. And we're one point clear. So it's, it's pretty good. We've also just found out uh, that 12 of our players have been called up for the World Cup, which is, of course, happening very, very soon. And we will be keeping an eye on them. I'm sort of tempted to do a, a one-off episode of the World Cup, so I might do that. You might see that on the channel very, very soon. But you can see we've got a decent, decent number of players across the teams that are in the competition. Um, unfortunately, Divock Origi wasn't called up for Belgium, which is a bit sad. But we do have De Ketelaer and Salamakas making their way over for the Belgian squad. Also, Tamori called up for England, uh, a few French ones. You can see them all there. But anyway, the focus of the end of this episode is the Europa League knockout playoff round draw. Let's head into the draw. I completely forgot what the Europa League music was. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just start the draw. Okay. Um, it takes a long time because they have special guest hosts and everything this year. I, I like it for the in-depth nature, but when I'm recording, I just I don't don't have time for this. The video will be about half an hour long. It's probably about half an hour long as it is. Okay, so the 16 teams in this draw, I'm not sure about the, the process of it, whether the Champions League third-place teams have to face all the second-place Europa League teams 
or what, but that's what's happened in this first one. Dortmund have got Slovan Bratislava in match one. Ajax have been drawn first in match two, and they're going to face Braga. So it does look like it's Champions League against Europa League. So we'll see who we get. But Sevilla have been drawn against Feyenoord. We'll just advance through to RT. Oh, there, there we are. Milan. So who have we got? We've got PSV. Okay, that seems winnable. We'll uh, advance to the end. And that is your lineup for the knockout first knockout round of the Europa League. So Marseille Roma is the, a big one in there. I would say that's probably the, the biggest game. We have a, a game against PSV. I think we should be winning that one, hopefully. So looking ahead to the next episode, if you don't include the, the World Cup special that I may or may not do on the channel, uh, that'll be sort of separate. It won't really include anything about this whole Milan save that we've got going on. So the next episode that will include that will be the Europa League knockout playoff round against PSV, which is apparently February. So we've got a lot of games to play in the meantime. We've got our final league game against Lecce to play before the World Cup break. Then we have a, a massive break until the start of January when we've got a ton of games. We've got Coppa Italia, we've got Super Coppa Final against Inter, uh, games against Bologna. Bologna? Why did I pick Bologna out of, all, out of all teams? Games against Juve, Napoli, Roma, Atlanta in the league before we face PSV in the Europa League. But that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out, hit the notification bell to stay notified, and I'll see you next time.